What's going on guys? Welcome back to another round of MCAT Fast Quick Discreet 3000 Accelerator Magic Round Time. So over here, what you're going to do is you're going to answer these MCAT Discreet questions, okay? This is from the Kaplan exam. So this is known to be harder than your regular AMCFL. So this is great practice, okay? You guys are going to answer 27 to 30 on your own, and then hopefully you get them all right. And if you don't, you'll learn why. Okay, so this is 27. Pick your answer. Write it down. 28, pick your answer, write it down, pause it if you need to. 29, pick your answer, write it down. 30, pick your answer, write it down, pause it if you need to, guys. Resume the video once you're done. All right, let's do this. Citric acid is a weak triprotic acid because it has multiple acidic protons. A solution of citric acid can, A, not act as an effective buffer. Look, if it's a weak acid, it's going to be a great buffer. Okay, and this can act as a buffer at all its pKa values. Okay, so not act, it will act as an effective buffer. Get out of here. Okay, bam, act as a buffer over several pH ranges. Yeah, hell yeah, only act as an effective buffer at a pH near its pKa. No, it'll act, not act. Okay, it will act as an effective buffer. Okay, all weak acids are great buffers. Okay, 27 is B. The human head weighs 4.8 kilograms and its center of mass is 1.8 centimeters in front of the spinal column joint. If the trapezius muscle inserts 1.1 centimeters behind the spiral cord joint, how much downward force does it need to exert in order to maintain equilibrium? Okay, they're talking about um, rotational equilibrium. So you got another torques and stuff. So let's say this is you. Okay, this is you, and this that's your spinal cord right here. Okay, this is your head, and this is your spinal cord. Okay, it's actually easier if you do it this way. Okay, let's say you are in the um, fetus sleeping position. Okay, this is your head here, this is your eye, this is your mouth. Okay, these are your legs. Let's say your legs are like this. Okay, your arm is this. This is your arm. All right, you're like on your side here like this. The pivot point for this torque equation is your spinal cord. So let's say your spinal cord's like, let's say it ends right here, your spinal cord. Okay, you have a long head. Okay, your head is going to place a force down here. Okay, that's going to be equal to mg. So mg is going to be your mass of your head, which is 4.8 kilograms times gravity, okay, and you're doing this at a distance of 1.8, 1.8 centimeters from the lever arm, so this is the pivot point here, okay, so 1.8 centimeters, which is also equal to um, 1 to 0 0.018 meters, 0 0.018 meters, okay, and your trapezius muscle, okay, should be like up here. It's going to be behind this joint here. And that's going to be at a distance of 1.1 centimeters, which is equal to 0 0.011 meters. All right. And they want to know what force in order to have this in equilibrium. So what's the force here? How do we do this? Well, you set them equal to each other. They're in equilibrium. Okay. So on the right side, you're going to have seven, not seven, right? 4.8, oops, close, okay, 4.8 kilograms, sorry that's sloppy guys, I'm writing with a mouse here, 7.8 kilograms times 10, which is the force of gravity, times 0 0.018, which is the distance from the pivot point here, equals 0 0.011 meters, okay, times mg, are they asking for the mass or are they asking for the force? How much downward force? Okay, so just asking for the force here. And then you do this, okay? You multiply these, you get a value, and then you divide this by that type of value, whatever you get. Okay, I'm gonna cheat and use a calculator because I wanna save your guys time. So this is equal to, oh my God, okay. 10 times. Zero, one, one. 
75. Or 78, really. Okay. 77 newtons. I got 78 on my calculator. So 28 is C. Let's keep going. On a globular protein, what are the preferred locations for leucine and phenylalanine residues? They are hydrophobic residues, so they're going to be in the interior. Okay, hydrophobic effect, guys. They're in the interior. The exterior are the uh, the charged ones, like the uh, basic and acidic amino acids that have the charges on them. Okay, 29 is D. Which of the following correctly describes the separation of the compounds below by extraction into dichloromethane and water? Dichloromethane, I believe, is rather it's not really a good organic layer dichloromethane is like this that's like that what the heck okay all right let's see what happens here if the solution were acidic caffeine would be more soluble in dichloromethane than in water if it's acidic caffeine is positively charged if we have a charge guys like a positive here or a negative here, if you have a charge on it, it's going to be soluble in water. It's, okay. it's going to want to be soluble in water more than the whatever that is, dichloromethane, okay? So if the solution were acidic, caffeine would be more soluble in water than in dichloromethane. So A is incorrect, okay? A is wrong. How do I strike through this? It's not letting me strike through. Here we go. If the solution were basic, okay, caffeine would be more soluble in dichloromethane than in water. Here we got caffeine. There's no charge on this. Therefore, this would rather be soluble in dichloromethane. Octanoic acid, since there is a charge in this, this would go in the water. Now, is caffeine rather polar? Mm, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. Do I really think it's going to dissolve just like that easily in dichloromethane? Not really, okay? But you're left with two options here, dichloromethane and water. So if you were to choose the di the caffeine in a basic solution would be more soluble in dichloromethane than it would be in water. Let's keep going so you guys can kind of really understand it because this is pretty high yield, okay? If the solution were basic, octanoic acid would be more soluble in dichloromethane than in water. This is wrong. If the solution were basic, Octanoic acid would be more soluble in water than dichloromethane. D. If the solution were acidic, octanoic acid would be more soluble in water than in dichloromethane. This is wrong. Okay, if the solution were acidic, octanoic acid would be more soluble in dichloromethane than in water. So, answer here is B. Hope that makes sense for you guys. And I'll see you in the next round of MCAT Quick Discrete 3000 Accelerator Magic Round. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think.